There'll be other people that'll no doubt come in uh, as we go. But again, want to welcome everybody uh, on this Saturday for coming to what I think will be a fun kickoff to a new program. Um, and that is uh, a what we hope will be a monthly sort of friendly, increasingly global competition to hack and improve what has been called Cyan within the open air community, which I'll describe for a minute. Um, but we think that this will be a great way for people of all kinds of backgrounds to get involved uh, creatively with carbon removal in a really DIY uh, ground up type of way. So really, really excited. And so what I'm gonna do is just give a little background before I introduce folks about you know, what we're doing here today. First of all, I know that the people who are joining, I'm sure are you know, mostly, or if not all, already members of the open air community. But for those of you who are not familiar with it, open air is a uh, completely volunteer virtual community that is now global. Uh, we have members on every continent and now dozens of countries. And we focus on accelerating carbon dioxide removal in the real world as a climate solution. And we have a very active, very creative, very fun uh, set of folks that are involved in citizen science and R&D projects, which you'll, this, this falls under that category. And you'll hear more about that uh, later on in the program from both contestant and my co-founder, uh, Matt Parker. Um, if uh, you want to, and if you haven't already, we are a Discord-based community, kind of like Slack, uh, very active, very fun. Um, please do join us. Uh, I'm going to ask Matt if he wants to just drop the links for the, uh, the join page. If you fill out the form there, we'll let you right in and introduce you to people. Uh, so what we're going to do today, which again, this has been sort of an organic uh, sort of work in, in the works for, for a long time. Um, and we're focusing on cyan and cyan is a really ingenious little device that one of our members and our chief uh, judge today, uh, Dal Winters uh, uh, made, I think going back two years ago, I think we first started. And basically what it is, is it's a very um, off the shelf, make at home micro carbon mineralization device. And what that means is, is that it's a device that converts, uh, that basically draws carbon out of the air using basic household or accessible uh, equipment and materials. And what it starts with, as you'll see, what this competition is based on today is with, we, we take a little bit of calcium hydroxide and we put it in the device. And the device is simply very, very basically just designed. It's got a, a bit of uh, humidity or moisture in it and some active airflow. This is the, uh, the original design that Dal made. And with those two characteristics, it's able to actually accelerate or hasten the rate at which calcium hydroxide uh, bonds with carbon dioxide in the air. And then the output of that is a powder uh, calcium carbonate. So little trace amounts of carbon dioxide are picked up out of the air from this process. And the idea from the very beginning by making such a simple accessible device is can we use it as the, the very first single celled organism in something that ultimately would become a lot more complex? And as an open source community, can we develop a community, a, a larger global community of people that are focused on taking this very simple thing in many different directions to evolve it um, as we go along? And it's already conducive to, to, to hacking into evolution because it is again, by design, quite simple. Really household items can be built very inexpensively but to, to add to its, its openness, it's also, it's, open so it's under an open source license. Uh, it's been certified by the Open Source Hardware Association and it's posted with all the documentation as well as a fact on OpenAir's GitHub repository or repo, which Matt will go ahead and drop the links to that as well. So anybody can take a look at it, build their own, change it, tell us what they did with it. And then you know, that's one way to get it to, to grow and change over time. We've already seen that a bit. One of the things that's been really exciting over the last six months or so, as we have a, a group of us within the Discord in open air, uh, basically all of whom are contestants today, are, uh, is how it's become a little more complex in terms of what we define as cyan. What are the other parts that we wanna link up to the mineralization box? 
And within Open Air World, very some since the very beginning uh, of our network, we've been working on open source direct air capture. These are machines that are purpose built to pull carbon dioxide out of the air. One of them called Violet. Uh, and then one of our members is also a contestant today, really started us down the road of making 3D printing filaments out of carbon-based materials. So these three pieces that were sort of floating around separately have really interconnected over the last six months as a common project. So the idea that we wanna to point to through these competitions and over time is to connect our DIY direct air capture machine that pulls carbon out of the air, connect it to a cyan device so that we're enriching that cyan chamber with, with more CO2 than is found uh, in the air as a way of accelerating the reaction time and increasing the drawdown. And then taking the material from that, the calcium carbonate and following some of the academic literature on the subject and making using that as an ingredient within a, um, within a 3D printing filament, which would then allow us to print out things made out of carbon. And again, this is the very baseline, the very simple uh, sort of basic, um, uh, sort of chain of devices that we're looking at. But the idea is, is six months from now, a year from now, as our community grows and as we have activities like this, can we take these in all sorts of different directions and just make it increasingly more awesome and creative? So with the evolution part, there's obviously, we have a very active community. We have folks who meet up every Monday morning and talk about it. We write about, you know, uh, on our forum, ways in which we uh, are, are sort of tweaking and, and changing the, the, the design. But we thought coming up with a more structured activity uh, could potentially help accelerate evolution and involve a lot more people. And so that was this idea of let's start just a monthly, very friendly community competition that anybody can join, whether they're currently in open air or not, form a team and then uh, compete. And the idea is, is that the competition, while right now would focus on, uh, oops, sorry, jumping ahead here. Uh, while the uh, competition right now today is focusing on that, hacking the actual original cyan design and will do future competitions just focused on that, it will increasingly focus on other elements of that chain. So optimizing our direct air capture unit, coming up with the best filament ingredient, or even subparts or components uh, of any of those devices. Um, for instance, how do we actually more effectively monitor or measure the amount of carbon that's been taken out, uh, the, the monitoring and verification. So as it becomes more complex over time, so will the, the, the nature of the competitions uh, each month, which again, I mentioned, we think cyan, our sort of spirit animal that cyan is named after is cyanobacteria. And the reason why that was is cyanobacteria, some of you know natural history, you know, this is the algae in the oceans that actually produced the oxygen that we have in the atmosphere. So we thought it was an interesting example of life, having this tiny little life distributed all over the oceans, having a cumulative effect of giving us an oxygen rich atmosphere, which obviously more complex life depended on. So when we look at open air, a bunch of people that are spread out all over the world in their garages or at their labs or wherever their schools, um, contributing to this in aggregate, can we make something actually really significant that maybe has relevance to the actual atmosphere going forward? And the other thing that's cool about cyan, which kind of almost like the monthly part, is that it, it evolves very, very quickly. It subdivides and, 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 and um, proliferates very, very quickly. So by having a monthly competition with a lot of people involved, we want to sort of mirror uh, uh, cyanobacteria. Okay, so today, we're starting off with uh, three teams are participating. Uh, these are really folks, for the most part, who have been involved in our Monday meetings uh, and have been thinking about different ways of sort of hacking cyan for a long time and already testing it out. So we have the air bouncers. They're going to introduce themselves uh, shortly. Uh, the Longhorns and Team Velcro. Uh, the rules of the uh, competition are a little bit fudged this time. We tried to stay within a budget of $200 or less. Uh, we had um, a maximum runtime where everybody started off uh, yesterday evening when they would start doing their carbon drawdown and then started, stopped right around the same time this morning. Uh, and then we have a standard amount of calcium hydroxide that was used. Uh, one team, I think, had to use more uh, in order for it to actually work with the design. So we're able to modify that by dividing the result. But the rules were very, very simple. And what we're grading for today is how much carbon is drawn down. We're gonna weigh that calcium carbonate and that will give us an indication actually of how much carbon was drawn down because we can compare it to the amount of calcium hydroxide that was put in. 
And then that's, that's going to be around half of the score. And then the other half is really creativity because what we're ultimately doing here, this is a creative act. It's constantly coming up with zany ideas or not so zany ideas uh, it, it, to take this whole uh, exploration in a different direction. So this is going to be creativity means the aesthetics, how it looks, the sort of cleverness or elegance of the design, the efficiency of material. And does this design potentially open up a clear new direction, a new way that we can think of sort of driving future de designs uh, for cyan? And so the scoring is going to be half and half for this one. We're just going to take a straight quantitative measurement. That's going to be a, a one to five points uh, that we'll have uh, for the scoring. And then the other scoring will be, um, uh, again, for that creativity. So that's the other half. So I'm going to introduce you to the judges in a second who are going to be doing the creativity scoring. But before I do that, Dahl Winters, I just first of all I want to say Dahl is a sort of a titan within our community. Uh, and she also is the person who came up with the original cyan design and has been working that and evolving that for close to two years in open air. And so I wanted to say, Dal, do you have anything you wanted to say or anything you wanted to add about the history of cyan or what it's all about? Sure. Well, once again, I'm really grateful that we're having this competition today and we have such outstanding uh, competitors as well as ideas that are sure to come and uh, be presented to us. Um, just um, I've I've been looking forward to the evolution of cyan for quite a while. I think it's a very wonderful approach to get more people on board. Um, I also wanted to add real quick, uh, if you go to GitHub and you search for the term carbon capture, uh, Apparently, cyan is number two out of 88 results. So uh, more stars than any other uh, open source project, uh, open hardware project that's on GitHub right now, uh, which I think is kind of cool and is a testament to how interesting um, this is to most people and um, how far we can go uh, in the future with everyone's help. Great. Awesome, Dahl. And we're going to introduce the other two judges. We're just going to give a little bit of their backgrounds in a second. So before we do that, I, since I have you here right now, Dahl, do you want to just talk a little bit about your very interesting eclectic science background and uh, how that led to science? Sure. Um, you know, I've had a wide variety of experience uh, with many science fields, uh, from biology to chemistry to physics to um, mostly computer science um, in industry, and then back to, again, carbon dioxide removal. We need all the help we can get with regard to um, turning the needle downward, um, and making CO2 come out of the atmosphere. Uh, lots of different uses, which I'm excited to see being explored here with regard to 3D printing filaments, with regard to products that can be made from CO2. But um, my background and what I've been doing at Open Air for the last two years has basically been um, advising, um, providing knowledge where I can from science uh, and uh, seeing how the community would like to take that and, and grow with it. So it's been really exciting and it's been fun as well. And you're joining us from the great state of Colorado, if you didn't mention. I am, yes, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> So what's at stake today? Very high stakes. So the winning team, or maybe all teams, we haven't decided yet, but shirts are, shirts are, um, uh, are at stake here. Um, Open Air has uh, developed some pretty awesome merch over the last several months uh, that are designed by our members. So uh, winning teams, members can select uh, which of the shirts they want that we will then send to them. We have the, the Klaus Lochner Legend of CDR shirt. Klaus Lochner is the the, the godfather of direct air capture. Uh, this is developed by one of our members in Brooklyn, uh, Ange Tran. We have now the top selling shirt, the I square basalt. Basalt is a fascinating uh, rock that has an amazing properties to store carbon dioxide. So that's there. Or you can just go with the, um, the traditional and original uh, open air uh, tea. So that will be up to winners to decide which ones they want. So let's quickly introduce our judges. You just heard from Dahl. Um, and we're super excited to have two other excellent uh, folks uh, join us and, and be judges. So we have Gloria C, who's also based in Colorado, and Wes Rosen, who is uh, based in Brooklyn. And I'm wondering if Gloria and Wes, if you could just maybe share a tiny bit of background and uh, your expertise of what you're working on. And I'll, I'll go ahead and start with Gloria. Since I came on camera early. Um, I am an electrical engineer, like you said, also out of Colorado. My big project right now is developing um, algae photobioreactors and using uh, that biomass for carbon capture. Um, so a bunch of algae in my living room. Love to talk about that with anybody who wants to chat about it more later. 
Awesome. And for those of you who are on the Discord, uh, Gloria did a really great Ask Me Anything with a leading researcher in the uh, biological or algae-based concrete space, Will Shrubar, and we'll be uh, posting the video to that. It was just a really great discussion for any of those concrete or algae nerds. Uh, we'll post it within the Discord if you can watch that. So, And uh, Wes Rosen. Yeah. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm an architect and builder um, based in Brooklyn. Uh, Chris and I go way back. Um, very interested in uh, all things design and, you know, especially now, like I'm sure everyone here, you know, trying to save this beautiful planet that we live on. And uh, yeah, I think it's everyone, you know, having these kind of conversations and, um, you know, thinking very creatively about, you know, how we live and excited to um, see what's happening here and always good fun hanging out with Chris and all of his, you know, uh, wonderful friends that he falls into you know these kind of projects so um yeah looking forward to seeing what uh comes of today's conversation but also following along yeah absolutely yeah i've been trying to drag wes who me and i were he and i have been collaborators for about 20 years on all sorts of renewable energy projects so awesome to have you wes uh thanks so much for joining um so what we'll do right now is we will the program is going to be each team of the three teams is just gonna have up to five minutes to present their device, show off their device. Uh, we ask, um, you know, at least one member of the team that is actually in proximity or, or with the space obviously should be presenting, but if other team members want to, they can share slides. Then we're all just gonna weigh, everybody's using a standing weighing device, what the calcium hydroxide or calcium carbonate is, and that will give us half of our score. And then we'll go ahead and have the judge review. I should say also after the team presentations, judges will have a couple minutes if they want to, to go ahead and ask uh, any questions, uh, clarifying or otherwise uh, of teams. But then after the weighing, we'll take 10 minutes where the judges can sort of ponder it over and think it through and then enter their score. And then when they're done, uh, uh, Dahl will let us know and we'll go ahead and announce. During that 10 minutes, uh, we won't be silent though. Um, this will be an opportunity for Matt Parker uh, who's my co-founder of Open Air, uh, based in New York, uh, to talk a little bit more broadly about what's happening with Open Air around our R&D and citizen science missions, as well as talk about a really interesting sort of big competition that he's putting together, formerly known as the Dacathon, and I always forget what it's called now, but uh, it's going to be pretty awesome, and he's going to tell us a little bit more detail about that. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. This is obviously a joke. There's nothing about this competition that's like mixed martial arts, but figured I would put that there. And we'll go ahead and go into our first um, our first uh, team, who's going to be Team Velcro, is going to go ahead and present. So Team Velcro, uh, please do. I'm going to stop sharing, uh, and you guys can go ahead and uh, step up and share. Sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm just going to pull up our slides. Uh, Bernard, if you want to turn your camera on and unmute so we can see you as well. Uh, let me pull up our slides. It's the uh, uh, Carbon Removal Challenge is the name now for the, the updated name for the Dacathon, for those of you who are curious. Uh, but here, right now, we are here to talk about uh, our, our entry as Team Velcro. Uh, so Bernard and I were not the only members of the team. We're the only members presenting today. Can everybody see uh, my slides OK? We can. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I want to specifically call out Evan Landau, who can't be here, but uh, in, a, in addition to working a bunch on the uh, design of our our project, also put together the initial uh, framework for this presentation. So uh, big thanks to, to Evan. Um, so one of the things that we realized right away when we got together as a team and started looking at our knowledge base and uh, our abilities and what we had in the team, what we did not have in the team, uh, was that we had a lot of people who were able to uh, make things move, put things together, build things, make them look pretty, but not a lot of chemistry <laughs> knowledge on our team. Uh, so we chose to focus on skills and abilities that we thought would help uh, from the perspectives of our strengths uh, and sort of forgo our weaknesses a little bit. Um, so uh, Bernard sort of became uh, our our key builder in the process and Bernard and Evan were sort of the uh, designers who sort of took the lead on what we were uh, working on. We sort of diagnosed some of the issues that we saw that uh, mechanical engineering or industrial design could uh, address about the, the sort of base cyan unit. So uh, one of the things is that we frequently needed to uh, 
do hands-on maintenance and move things around with the, you know, uh, putting a new material in, taking material out, uh, hydrated lime, removing uh, the, after the CO2 was captured and the CO, CO3, what, like what we could do with it afterwards and how we could uh, automate that process a little bit, uh, given some of our skills and backgrounds. Um, so we decided we wanted to design some sort of mechanism for automatically bringing new material into the cyan uh, and then have uh, some sort of controller that would automate after a certain amount of time removing that material, bringing new material in. Uh, that would also limit, uh, address some of the limited ability, uh, limited capacity of the, of the hydrated lime, bringing in new hydrated lime over time and then removing it um, and then having sort of a receptacle for storing the the uh, output material. So uh, I'm going to turn over to Bernard to talk about our sort of concept ideation of how we uh, got to our solution. And Matt, your team is based in New York City and Bernard is in Montreal, Quebec, right? Yes, we most of our members are in New York, but Bernard is in Montreal. Yeah, yeah, we're in the same time zone though, so it, yeah, was, uh, <laughs> it was doable. It was doable. East Coast. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, but it was good because we just uh, had one thing to send through uh, the mail. So, uh, yeah, I'll talk a bit about uh, how we uh, built the unit, basically. So, yeah, this is, uh, well, uh, one of the first concepts I had. I was like, okay, uh, since I don't have that much background in chemistry, I'm just going to try to improve uh, surface areas. And uh, so, basically, that was my first concept to uh, kind of... Uh, separate uh, different um, uh, levels and put the powder in so the humidity uh, could reach more uh, hydrated lime. So here's a picture of the first concept. It was pretty simple. Uh, just uh, throw that air pump uh, and you can see I had 10 uh, kind of slots where I, I put the, um, the powder in. Um, so then uh, we started talking about, okay, how could we improve the surface area? We got into a call and we were like, okay, um, it's good to improve the surface area. It's good to automate everything. So like Matt said, we don't have that much background in chemistry. So that was the first concept. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, play it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So we said, okay, okay, let's use uh, vibrating motors. Whoa. And um, I was like, okay, maybe, uh, maybe it can uh, enhance uh, how we can remove um, the uh, CaCO3 from the, uh, the, the the Velcro. So that was the that was the first con uh, con uh, concept. So then we can pass on to the next slide. Maybe. <laughs> I'm trouble yeah. getting to this slide. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck there for some reason. Okay, there we go. All right. So here are the first uh, design uh, concepts that we had. Uh, we designed this with uh, Evan. So yeah, he started, uh, you know, uh, having ideas, and we talked about it. Uh, these were uh, these were the first sketches. Um, we were thinking about, you know, uh, sticking that that CO, uh, CaCO3, uh, well, the CO2, and the with the hydrated lime on the Velcro, and then uh, make it vibrate with the vibrating motors. So these were the first concepts, but um, we were like, okay, let's automate it a bit more. So, so manually, we're going to be like sticking something into uh, the hydrated lime, then putting it into the vial, taking it out and like shaking it off using the, the vibrating motors. But then, yeah, as Bernard said, we would, we came up with sort of a more advanced version with a sort of conveyor belt system. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you can see it in this uh, picture here. Uh, well, this design. So the conveyor belt is there in pink. Uh, the, the Velcro is on the conveyor belt and uh, kind of drags the um, hydrated lime onto it when it turns. So you've got a small motor and um, every 12 hours, the motor is going to turn. And, um, and so basically it captures the CO2 that's on the, the Velcro. Uh, it captures a uh, CO2 and turns it into CaCO3. And then once it's done, the vibrating motors, which is the yellow pad, uh, are going to shake the powder off into the pink uh, tray. And so basically it's gonna turn again and bring some more um, uh, hydrated lime on the, the Velcro uh, conveyor. So that was kind of the big idea. So here, uh, yeah, an, uh, another initial sketch. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it the square one, that's my design. I'm not too good at designing. Uh, so you can see here, um, we've got our kind of uh, our wheels that uh, I stuck with, a, I, I put a bearings on it. 
so it turns easily and the motor is also um, screwed on it. I will uh, say that I think you are good at designing, uh, just Evan uh, <laughs> is uh, makes, able to make things look a lot uh, like really pretty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Well, Evan, uh, Evan, uh, Evan's design is pretty good. Yeah, so you can, you guys can get a better idea with uh, these designs. Uh, and basically, we've got the the air pump uh, stuck on the side, screwed on the side. Uh, we have the Arduino as well there. Um, we don't see the Arduino here, but you'll see it on the final product. Um, so yeah, basically that's what it looks like uh, when it looks good. Ta da. The better this one. Is sort of the yeah the design <laughs> mock-up that uh, that Evan came up with, which uh, ended up being pretty close. Um, All right, very cool. Let's see it. So, so this is the final design. Um, yeah, it's kind of a Frankenstein. Don't be scared. <laughs> we were kind of tight in time, and uh, I mean there are still a uh, few problems. Uh, so I managed to make it work, but yeah, there are still uh, some uh, upgrades that we can bring to the product. So here you can see um, it doesn't consume that much energy because the Arduino only runs every what uh, half a day, every 12 hours. So we've got the, those four nine uh, volt batteries powering the vibrate the vibrating motors. You've got the uh, pump uh, right underneath, and the um, the uh, mother kind of a motherboard here, the Arduino right next to it. So the motherboard just turns this uh, small um, motor there. And uh, we just coded the, um, the motor so that it turns uh, on a kind of a regular basis every uh, yeah 12 hours. And then we still have to code the vibrating motor. So this is still manual. And uh, you can see we, we put the powder in the middle. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's good. So yeah, here are some parts that we used. Um, so you can see, uh, yeah, it really is a Frankenstein. Um, you can see the... Uh, what was it, uh, Matt? The second picture is the. Oh, that's Arduino? actually a uh, servo motor that I was modifying that I broke the board on in half. You can actually see it's a little separated there. Um, but that that is the insides of uh, the other servo motor, uh, which I managed not to break, uh, is shown in the third picture with some three D printed parts on it uh, that got added to uh, to secure it to the um, to the unit. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty cool. So. Uh... Yeah, I put it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, those were some of the parts we used. We used 3D printing. Uh, I made the outside of the, the unit with um, um, plexiglass. So where I used a lot of materials, I had to, uh, had to use um, uh, water repellent so the water didn't get out. Um, so yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was quite the build. And uh, <laughs> So yeah, right we, now, we, we went a little over budget. We'll, we'll be honest about that. Yeah, yeah, a bit over budget, but I still think we're around 200. I did a quick maths and uh, oh, yeah, okay. uh, we're around 200, but the most expensive part was the plexiglass because uh, I took um, three, uh, three quarter of an inch thick plexiglass so that it would uh, not uh, bend or anything. So yeah, that was our project. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. Really, really cool, guys. I was getting little bits and pieces of that over the last couple of weeks. Going way back, I think, uh, Bernard, some of the key elements there were things that you had thought about, I think, a while ago. And it's, I could see Evan's hand reflected in that, too. So super cool, guys. Well done. So why don't we do this? We're, we're, we're good for time. So we have plenty of time for the other teams to, to present. But judges, do you have any kind of questions or comments before we move on to team two? I just have a quick one. This is this was tremendous work and um, very impressive. I I'm curious that uh, plexiglass that you have around the box, um, um, and that is to keep the humidity in, correct? Or um, is that or are there other uses for it? Uh, it's just because it was it, it wasn't gonna bend or anything, and it was easy to cut and and you know, screw in and uh, mm -hmm. I could have used something else, but yeah, it keeps humidity pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna change shape. Uh, that's what happened with uh, my 3D printed one in the past. Uh, I put it under mm -hmm. the sun for a day and uh, everything started bending. So mm -hmm. I, I thought, okay, why not use plexiglass? And mm -hmm. it's easy to manipulate and you know, cut, put stuff together. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. can see through it too. It's really nice. So um, yeah. amazing, amazing innovation there. 
Cool. And one thing I should mention is Matt showed the GitHub there, but the plan is, is as this grows in the actual Cyan repo, we can branch off different versions of Cyan. So they're all in sort of one place. So that's a pretty radical departure from the original design. Uh, great work, guys. Uh, Wes or Gloria, did you guys have any questions? Uh, again, you don't need to, but if you do. Uh, I've got a, go ahead. Oh, Wes, go ahead. You're probably a little more deeply technical. No, no, no. Uh, just actually more conceptual uh is the idea that this would be sort of integrated into the base cyan um unit or is this like a something that would branch off and become its own um sort of device that uh works before yeah. actually going into the the carbon capture yeah i think um this ideally would be something that would replace the, i mean you know we're not that we're saying we're going to win and we're the best but um it would replace the base cyan unit because of the automated approach where you could just put a bunch of uh, material in the hopper at the beginning and then let it run automated for days on end uh, mm -hmm. without you having to repopulate it with uh to, to replenish it with new material so uh that's part of the reason why our uh, so one of our the differences in ours is that the we exceeded the sort of 10 gram amount because part of our design was to make it so that you could actually have more material go in a uh without uh the automation of it made it so that more material can go through without human intervention so um hopefully this would be something that would work in conjunction with other people's design improvements uh especially if they did improvements on chemistry and we'll adjust for that uh different level of calcium hydroxide in our scoring just so that the teams understand it Yep. Yeah, it's not that much higher. It's uh, I put twenty grams, and so only ten. Uh, yeah, I mean, still, it's a only lot. Only double. Uh, we'll, we'll divide it. We'll divide it in half. So we can divide in half. No, no worries. So uh, just for, for time here, uh, yeah, go ahead, Gloria. Um, I'm curious if you have, uh, let's say, involuntary human interaction and you knock it over or I got a cattle dog, he likes to investigate. When you get that, um, since you guys have more like mechanical parts, do you have any concerns about the lime or the carbonate getting, mm. getting ground into anything or causing problems down the line? Well, the one I have right now, the Frankenstein one, yeah, because uh, I did everything, you know, uh out of the blue and i 3d printed some parts really quickly i mean i started building it three days ago or four days ago so um just cutting the plexi lasts it took two days but at the end of the line the goal would be to make everything you know kind of uh more homogeneous uh i speak french sorry for my <laughs> my english but uh uh, to make everything you know uh, more safe like the the, the, the water could be uh, like i don't know if you can see, you, you could have uh, you could see in the picture but there's kind of a funnel that brings water in and so this we could isolate it with the water and you know uh, put a you know like a cork or something and when you want to remove the water you just pull it out and when there's too much water it can get out as well so it's fully automated and yeah the batteries and everything yeah also would be kind of isolated it's just that i had no choice for this unit to make everything you know the wires everywhere and the, <laughs> the motor is not uh, yeah not i guess the short answer is yes with our current unit yeah. but the longer answer is we think we could probably make it more secure if uh we were able to have more if we weren't like this month long you know uh race competition thing we could secure it better yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. thanks guys it's yeah. way cool thanks Awesome. Team Velcro, fantastic job. All right, let's move on again. The other teams can take more time if they want to. Um, five minutes is a pretty tight window, so feel free to elaborate more fully. But let's bring the second team up. We got the Air Bouncers uh, are joining. I'm not sure who's presenting if that's Ed or Ling or a collabo. I think we're going to do a kind of a collab. I can um, present slides. Uh, Great. And say where your uh, where your team is located. You guys are pretty dispersed. Yeah, um, I'm from San Mateo, California. I'm in Des Moines, um, Iowa. Uh, I'm in Summit, New Jersey. So we're spread across multiple time zones, and uh, we met at 7, 7 p.m. Pacific time, which was 10 o'clock my time. And uh, it worked out perfectly for, for us uh, uh, to, to meet over across that time zone. 
great. Good, good, good stress test for how we can do these things virtually. Yeah. So, guys. Um, all right. Get us my slide. We can. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Um, all right. Like so, we kind of approached it in the same manner, kind of looking at how to increase surface area um, and then ease of use. I've done a few things with a suspension, air, attempting air suspension uh, in the past. So that kind of fed into how this was approached and, and what could happen with it. And there's a number of problems with that process and containment and it becomes just kind of a mess. So we went with a different direction uh, using a, a motorized arm that would swing around a drive shaft inside a bucket. And we actually had the, uh, the uh, concept of, of building with a plexiglass box at first as well, but I, I really didn't want to build a plexiglass box. So uh, we decided on this bucket and laser cut some screens that fit the diameter of the bucket at different levels. Uh, there's a two RPM motor uh, mounted at the base uh, that drives two swing arms, um, or three swing arms for each level with a kind of a brush that brushes the Hydro the calcium hydroxide around the screen. Let me show the next slide. So, um, so there's like the brush to, um, feature mm -hmm. that goes around. Um, so that's supposed to be the motor. It's like not the shape of the motor, but <laughs> it represents it. So it brushes. The idea is that it brushes and spreads it at a very thin layer, and then goes through the screens to the next screen. And then that gets brushed, it goes through that screen to the next screen. So it just goes successfully down, exposing new surface area as it goes. And there's a small pan at the bottom that's the same diameter as the bottom of the bucket that collects everything at the end. So you essentially just pull everything out as a stacked unit. Uh, each level is held with some pegs. And then we added some atomizers, which seemed that was probably the biggest challenge was getting the atomizers to work. Uh, consistently and reliably. And then adding the, they, they seem to only use a little bit of water. So the water input was a, was a big issue. So there's a, we had to modify a couple of things on the fly uh, to get the water to, to function and create steam and work with the atomizers. And then a small, small uh, computer fan. So tried to keep the, the power supply pretty low. And one of the things I think we also wanted to look at is ease of construction for someone who might not have a whole lot of uh, 3D printing ability or something like that, uh, even though we ended up using laser cutters and 3D printers anyway, that's how it, that's what happened. So the air goes into the side um, through this, through this little kind of plexiglass box, which ended up making a plexiglass box anyway. And it's got a water reservoir at the top above that, which has a little drip valve that I, I quickly made after a few attempts to get it to drip slowly, I quickly made with a piece of clay and a toothpick. And that drips down to the bottom to feed the atomizers. And as those steam up, the, the fan draws it in and then it circulates through the bucket and then out the vent holes at the top. Uh, the screen or the swing arms only kick on once every, I initially started doing it once every hour and uh, then realized that it's probably going to be better to do it once every three hours uh, just to get it, give it more time for each surface layer. And then uh, that's kind of about it. There's, there's a lot of problems with getting it out. Not too bad, but it, it does take a lot of time to put it together, probably about 10 minutes to put it together and then 10 minutes to get it out. So, you know, getting the, the, calcium hydroxide out after the run is done and collecting it is, needs definite improvement. And as well as the atomizers and just a constant kind of autonomous, it'd be nice to get to an autonomous type of, uh, to a point where it's autonomous, you don't have to deal with it. It would definitely work better with much more uh, calcium hydroxide than just 10 grams. I think it would benefit to be able to put in a start of 20 or 30 or more on each level and let it kind of filter through. I think that's kind of about it. Very cool. I, Dahl said it, but I love the cement truck. Uh, and one thing actually I think is so cool about your guys' group and in all of these groups is 
the diverse sort of backgrounds that you come from. You know, you're you're a sculptor, and I wonder if the other members of teams could put in the chat, you know, what they do during the day, uh, because it's it's really cool how your different sort of perspectives and expertise comes together to make, you know, really unique objects like this. Um, really, really cool. Um, that track is a kind of an homage to Chris Burden's uh, steamroller, flying steamroller. I wish I was cultured enough to get the reference, but I will uh, <laughs> I'll let others appreciate that. Um, judges, uh, questions, uh, comments? I have one. Um, so did you encounter any static from the plastic bucket when trying to remove the calcium carbonate? I did not, no. Okay, well, oh, that's good, that's good. And, I, do, um, I do have and an anti-static spray, so that could be sprayed onto it. Oh, okay, that's that. That's a good point. Um, and also, uh, did you find out that? Um, so basically, you it was hard getting the uh, the calcium uh, um, um, carbonate out. If you're weighing the material, are you planning to weigh the entire bucket, or how do you? No, um, you can pull it out. It's just that because the discs are so wide, you have to have kind of a wide thing to mm -hmm. drop it on and collect it. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay. All right. It's not, Perfect. it's not entirely that, it's not that messy. It's just more time consuming than it is anything else. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Great. Other judges uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm curious about the form factor and why it's on legs. I'm not sure if I like didn't catch that as you were talking through. Is that to keep space okay. underneath for the, the motor or is there another role there? Yeah, the, well, the motor is mounted on the bottom and it's just a small DC motor. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. about three inches in length. So it had to be set up. And I mean, I've, I'm a sculptor, so I just get a little, I just make stuff. If I get the chance to add something to it, and I have the time, that's what I did. So I decided just to do that. Most everything is made from scrap. So the plexi was donated. The screens on the inside were donated from a frame shop, local frame shop. Uh, the bucket you can find at any deli or any you know bakery will give you a bucket with a lid. Uh, the 3D, the mount is 3D printed. Um, well, that's probably the, the hardest part was getting the 3D printed mounts and then the, the plexi laser cut discs. Cool, thank you. Yep. Uh, so you said you didn't want to do a plexi box. Um, I imagine just because of the time and difficulty of doing that. Would you ideally have a clear bucket so that you could see the mechanism? And I would love to have a clear bucket. Clear buckets are going to be really difficult to source for free, but it would really be awesome to get to get a clear bucket or a clear acrylic tube. The benefit to the bucket, however, is that it's got a tapered side. So when they cast the bucket, you know, it comes out tapered. Uh, to a, a plexi tube is probably not going to be tapered. It's going to have a straight side. So you'd have to modify a little bit, but. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Jay. We, so a couple of things that the design was was conducive for people, you know, you can find buckets pretty much everywhere. And so if someone wants a low cost, you know, and they don't have a lot of um, access to tools, it's a good a good starting point. Uh, so it's the it, material you could like, um, like found objects, you can repurpose things to, to capture capture carbon um the the other thing is that we run enough air through this uh to to capture the same moles of of 10 grams in like se seven uh, like eight minutes or so so we have a lot of good airflow the time we need it to run will depend on how much uh, uh calcium carbonate is loaded into it um and then our power dissipation is uh in this configuration, 10 and, a, 10 and a half watts without without the timers. If you in the, include the timers, it's about 12 and a half watts. Yeah. So so we're we're very power efficient and, and we run a lot of air through the through the mechanism. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up too, Jay, because one of the things as we go forward with this, we're always going to be optimizing for energy and all sorts of other characteristics. So it's cool that both teams so far have clearly had that in their heads. Uh, with this first design so 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 with with this design approximately if you if you run it off of you know um wall power you can run it for uh, about 1.7 hours 
and that'll then you'll generate as much carbon from the grid as you do collect. All right. So our fish, we think where our efficiency is pretty good, assuming assuming all our assumptions. You know, we did the ideal gas law for, for all the calculations here. So it, when we do our measurements and do our weigh in, we'll see see how close we get. Very cool. Well, I am eagerly awaiting that, which we'll do in just a few minutes or a little while after the, the final team. We are going to go over, you know, probably 10 or 15 minutes, which uh, fine by me if folks are okay, but just want to make sure we get through the program. Awesome work, uh, Air Bouncers. Uh, fantastic. All right. Thank you. So do we have uh, Team Longhorn uh, ready to pop up? Yeah. Oh, wait, oh wait hold on we're gonna hello we're gonna turn <laughs> off this background okay great um isha's on it great while she's doing that hello um we are team longhorn and our product you can't see we have a, we don't have a presentation because we did not have time to make one but we do have a whiteboard behind us that says stuff on it that you can't see you still can't see it even though it's still there but we are also our device is called coke bottle and you will soon understand why um so our team consists of Matt over here, Isha, me, the amazing help with Chris, uh, and then Melanie, who's currently at her sister's wedding. So she's all the way down here. Um, but yeah, so what we wanted to focus on with our design uh, was, ma was mainly using it as like a testing device, something that would increase the rate of CO2 absorption. Um, I will say, um, just as like a caveat, is that our device, the way that is kind of intended to be ran, uh, really, really isn't like conducive for like the testing we had in the competition. Um, it's more so a daytime um, thing that you want to be able to like check up on hourly. So there is a downside and that you need to actually be there to uh, start flushing out the actual CO2. So what it actually is, well, it is, you can see why it's probably called Coke, why it's called Coke bottle. Um, it's in a soda stream uh, canister, and that's because this is a liter uh, in size. It can handle uh, very high pressures, and also um, you can also test it with high CO2 stream absorption if you um, want to look at theoretical things um, with your sorbent testing. So what we did is, um, and I'll hand it off to you in a second, um, is we actually 3D printed, and we don't have the presentation, so we can't show you the CAD, but uh, we CADed and 3D printed a um, un stacked umbrella structure, almost like a pagoda, um, in order to actually make a 3D lattice structure that was kind of accessible for all, all types of sorbents. So whatever kind of sorbent you have um, and want to test in a 3D space, um, that you could actually put this uh, lattice into it. This is actually going to be a little awkward for a second, sorry. Um, oh no, it's hard to do while I'm presenting. Um, and so it's actually designed so that we can actually close it and then open it back up once it's actually inside. So you can see that it's actually, in, it, it's hard to show like this, but it actually opens and closes. You can see its movement kind of, um, so that it can actually expand once it is inside the bottle. Um, and it's perfect, it's a perfect um, vessel. Uh, it's not open fully right now, but it's a perfect vessel, you can see for stacked layers of sorbent for testing. So this is all 3D printed with PETG, uh, very inexpensive, but, yeah, and so what did we actually, what was, what was our budget on this? What is our budget on this, Matt? Uh, yeah, so this was $95 for the soda stream and everything inside was $10. Um, so it was pretty cheap. We went way under budget, uh, 105 in total. And really our design is based off a of distillation column. So you have these trays here and uh, that just increases the surface area. And then on the bottom, you have a sponge that's to soak up the water. And it's also important to have a sponge here because if you shoot water down the down the soda stream, you're worried about water splashing up and it clumping up. Uh, so that just makes it harder to clean. So we have this sponge here to make sure humidity is increased. And we also have higher temperature. So you increase the absorption of the uh, sorbent itself. Oh yeah, just a side note, I forgot. Um, reason it's supposed to be outside is because uh, we didn't want to do it for uh, testing or for showing you guys right now, but it was is going to be spray painted in rubber uh, and, and some liquid rubber to actually make it more of a black box structure and increase the temperature as well as the pressure. And it was also pressurized to 30 PSI overnight, um, which was unfortunate that we couldn't change out the air throughout every, like every hour or so, but um, we were able to maintain constant 30 PSI via actually a manual system where we had a bike pump um, or bike thing <laughs> attached to there 
and actually just use a pipe pump to set it to 30 psi. Sorry, this is sad. Yeah, do you want to? Well. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, they went over the design and budget, I guess, just like going over challenges um, and then just like future areas of improvement. So number one, it would be to actually add the insulation at the on the outside, like Sebastian mentioned, um, and then also trying to avoid that like manual checking up. So trying to automate um, <clears throat> fixing the pressure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, yes. ask us your questions because we might have missed stuff now that we can yeah. have a presentation. <laughs> Our slideshows are. But yeah, it looks a little janky, and I hope you guys get why we call it Coke bottle. Great, awesome guys, and you guys are just to point out, you're all if it wasn't obvious at the University of Texas at Austin. And yes, we are in Austin there. right now, and there's actually uh, the UT Bama game is going on right outside, so it's actually yeah. very chaotic. Um, and it was very difficult to get here, as I, I mentioned to you, Chris. Well, thanks for making it. It's also, these guys are all part of the UT Negative Emissions Technology Club, which is fantastic. Uh, really, really excited about it. And uh, did you guys have anything else to show? I, I noticed that's a soda stream bottle, but I don't oh know. Oh my God, we <laughs> do have something else to show. Thank you for mentioning this, because what happens when you want to do a high CO2 test? Well, then you put it into the actual soda stream and you can see there's not actually much water left in here because we've actually taken it all out. Um, you can see that's one squeeze and that's two pressures. I'm not gonna pressurize it too much, but when we actually take it out, you can see the humidity. Oh, I forgot how to take it off. I don't know if you guys can see over Zoom, but there's it's much more opaque now because the humidity um, so the water from the bottom actually distributes a lot with the bead. Um, this internal structure right here is actually a straw. Um, so when it's in inputted into the soda stream, the air injection actually goes straight down to the, uh, the sponge and water down here and disperses it um, relatively evenly, as even as we could get. Um, it actually does create some nice like little air clouds in here, or water clouds in here. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I love it. Um, great job, guys. Judges, questions? Impressive. Um, I, I'm just curious, how do you load the calcium hydroxide onto the, um, the, the uh, insert? Uh, and I, I know you can pull it out, but how do you get it in there in the first place? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that was, um, I mean, actually, I'm again. So that was one of the issues that we had with like actually like putting it together. And that was why we we're able to put our presentation together is because um, you know there, there has to be some decent tolerances on your three prints because this is with mm -hmm. PETG so it's very inexpensive and not very um, uh, not incredibly precise so we did need to do a bit of like sanding and things like that and there would be some adjustments made to the actual um, dimensions of things um, but you do just it, it really is it's very hard it's, I don't want to show it directly on here but it is literally pull it out like that you can just mm -hmm. once you pull it up um, are you pliers is probably the easiest way to do so. Mm -hmm. It will contract and actually come right. out. And I don't want to force it out um, right now because mm -hmm. I clearly am bad at doing this over presentation. But it was, um, it is a bit of a pain to actually get the calcium hydroxide onto it. Um, mm -hmm. So what I did was I really just did it over like a sheet pan um, and then weighed the actual umbrella beforehand mm -hmm. and then uh, added on, added on, and then weighed it um until we reach the 10 uh in additional okay. ones mm -hmm. wonderful and so there um mm -hmm. soda stream um um what is the percent of uh carbon dioxide you have in there um that you're using for um um for pressurization I didn't, I didn't, sorry we didn't catch that so our sound is a little low Okay, but but it's above ambient, right? So, um, um, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a question about the insulation. Um, you said that you would apply like an opaque rubber on the outside. Um, is there a, a way to keep it clear so that you can appreciate the the beauty of the mechanism on the inside that still gives you the insulation? Have you guys, I guess, looked into that? Or are you trying well, to preserve the visibility um, to the inside of the chamber? 
Uh, we really just wanted to increase the amount of uh, absorption. So our main concern was just the efficiency itself instead of the, the clarity. Yeah, raising the heat was uh, the prior is or is the priority versus the aesthetics of it. Which for the presentation, we want to make sure it's clear so you guys can see the actual system. Um, but maintaining a high temperature um, was more important, and creating an actually fully insulated black box was uh, was definitely is definitely the priority when looking at the actual system as a whole. Whenever it's like actually implemented. Great, Gloria. Any questions at all? Yeah, just quick follow up building on Dahl's first question. If you guys were going to improve the design to make that loading easier, what would you do in your next version? I would say, I would say use a higher quality uh, material. I'd probably use like, honestly, I'd probably use like resin or something like that. But I, and then I would have, we would have to make sure we adjust the dimensions so that um, we don't want the resin to break by being forced around, like and being, it's not, in my experience, it's not very pliable. Um, but probably I yeah, use resin for the print. Um, and I mean, yeah, the black box, if you're saying like spray it down. Um, it's also the testing conditions, making it a little bit more accessible because our testing conditions yeah. are pretty narrow. You know, it's mm -hmm. during the day, uh, it's, it needs to be hot. There's, mm -hmm. you know, the soda stream needs to be there. So hopefully, uh, we can, uh, brought into testing conditions. So it doesn't need to be all perfect before. Yeah. It's very niche at this point. It's very cool. That's, that's a great design, you guys. Yeah, extremely cool. Great. All right. Wow. I'm glad we went over. Hopefully that's okay for everybody, but let's jump in. Uh, congratulations to all the teams on very divergent, extremely cool uh, designs, which is the whole point here. So now we're going to jump in. Uh, I think we can do this pretty quickly. The, the great way in, which is half of the score. And because I suck at math and you don't want to put me near any kind of instruments, I'm going to let Dahl help out with the uh, sort of guidance for that. I know the teams know how to do that, but uh, Dahl, um, I guess what we could do is one team right after the other in the same order that presented. So we can start with team Velcro, but uh, Dahl, if there's any live uh, guidance we can give to the teams on this, um, mm -hmm. uh, we can go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bernard, I think you have the uh, device. Yeah, yeah, I have the device. One second, I'm gonna turn my camera on. Uh, just gonna get my skill. You want me to film it? Uh, uh, we're, 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 we're recording. Stuff. Yeah, just the uh, just turn your camera on, which should be good. Yeah, it's just I'm walking everywhere right now. Just a second, and taking a, it's gonna be a kitchen bowl. <laughs> All right. Just make sure you wash that before you uh, <laughs> yeah. use it again, Bernard. Oh yeah, I'm gonna wash it. Let me sure about that. <laughs> so um, here's my bowl. Here's my scale. Well, um, okay, so we might have lost a bit of powder in the process. So it might even be <laughs> lower than what I put in initially. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. Uh, all right, let's see my weight here. Oh, yeah. All right, perfect. Zero it out. All right. Uh, one second. Hop, 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 hop. Don't want to lose any. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> for, for, oh, we're at oh, there we go. Okay. Now I can see 16.6. All right. So we've lost 3.4 grams. <laughs> <laughs> so 16.6 uh, uh, out of uh, 10. Uh, so basically, you've gained. Um, no, no, we or we're using twenty. We use twenty oh. for our. Oh, that's right. Okay, i That's right. But we probably we had some spillage. It, it looks like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that's the problem of uh the process. Um, mm -hmm. basically we lost. Um, I'm gonna show you the tray here and the unit. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, it's kind of uh, my mm -hmm. kitchen here. But you see, we still have some in the tray. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes. It was hard to remove, and I still have a bit on the Velcro here. So yeah, it's hard to do the exact um, quantity. We we've lost some here on the vibration uh, vibrating pad, and even here on one of the sides of the collector. Mm -hmm. um, 
so yeah that's probably where all of the rest went mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> we'll have to think through a, a workaround on how to how to measure that that or, or score it uh so we'll, we'll, we'll do that on the fly uh but uh okay great well thanks guys so we'll, we'll thank you figure out a way to do that um so uh air bouncers all right let me uh Wrong one. There it is. The suspense is palpable. Suspense. <laughs> I had to do all this at home and I had to drive everything to the university to do this, so. Eleven point nine four. So it looks like we round that up to two, right, Doc? Mm-hmm. Yep. All Eleven right. point nine four. That looks good. In and out. It's recorded. Well done, team. Great and uh, Longhorns. <laughs> okay, so. In the chaos of this traffic, I may have forgotten the scale because I brought a lot of things. However, however, um, I did document every part of the process as we went along and I have pictures of everything. So I did actually weigh the, uh, I did weigh it post uh, drying. Um, and I actually have a picture of that. <laughs> um, first off, <laughs> Okay, I'll just show you the, I'll just show you, we lost, we lost stuff and now we're at 8.8 .8, um, and I think that's because this is filled with adhesives to stick every, to stick a lot of things together. So you can see how foggy it is. Um, I do genuinely think, to, I mean, not genuinely think, you can see, it's hard to see over Zoom though, uh, a lot of it's actually just lost to this structure itself, which I think repeated uses would mitigate that, um, but we are at 8.8. 8. And I'm sorry for, for, getting, for forgetting that stuff. Oh, no worries. Um, as far as, uh, do you have the weight of the entire unit? Uh, the um, Yes. Um, and so maybe uh, you can take the, if, if you weigh the entire unit with the calcium carbonate in it before, and you can then add the weight of the entire unit with the calcium carbonate that you've taken out, um, that will give you um, maybe a better representation. As long as your whole unit is under uh, 200 grams or whatever the tolerance. Yes, I do actually have those those numbers here. Oh, okay. Um, so if I do the math real quick, actually, so if I can pull this up, we have 108.2 is the weight of our bottle, and then our okay. umbrella structure was 35.7 plus 10, which is the calcium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other side, we had a bottle weight of 112.1 minus, sorry, sorry, minus 8.8. Um, I just forgot what I was doing with math. The dried one is 8.8, .8, the umbrella post. So the umbrella itself did mm -hmm. get um, actually 0.6 grams added to it afterwards. And the actual bottle itself um, with all of the, um, what's it called again? Mm -hmm. All the calcium hydroxide, now calcium carbonate on the mm -hmm. sides actually gained about three grams, um, the total weight. But there is also um, some uh, water that uh, mm -hmm. very, we, we added five grams of water, but we did pour that out. So it's excess water probably contributes mainly to that three, mm -hmm. three, four grams, actually more like it rounds more to four grams. Okay. So There's four uh, grams uh, out of um, um, water that's mainly absorbed, but also um, calcium carbonate um, as well that's in the bottle. Um, so it's a little up in the air on that. Okay. Um, so the um, the weight of the bottle uh, with everything in it um, before was 108.2 plus 35.7. That was for the insert. Um, and yes, so and that's not counting the, um, that's not counting the 10 grams of calcium carbonate. Okay. And so, We're going to wash um, the balls elsewhere. Yeah, so it looks like I can, uh, I am able to get at least some weight here. Um, yeah, I, I took uh, your, so, so for the ending weight, we have 112.1 plus 35.7 plus 8.8. .8. Um, 
and you did uh, appear to lose 2.7 grams through that. Is that what it is doing? actually? Sorry, I should have made this more clear. The umbrella actually, because it caught on to um, about actually 0.6 grams of mm -hmm. uh, calcium carbonate is mm -hmm. actually 30, 36.3 grams at the end. So oh, everything kind of gained, everything gained weight together with um, the calcium carbonate sticking to it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think it would be definitely more, it would be better to run it again uh, uh, multiple more times to mitigate the um, actual mm -hmm. like sticking of this calcium carbonate to things. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. probably a big issue because there's a lot of super glue and hot mm -hmm. glue um, for our kind of last minute adjustments to it. Um, mm -hmm. more things well, sticking around. Let me All let me right. propose this, Dal. If you think that that is workable to derive a number, let yeah. me know. Uh, obviously, with I already did. You did. Um, okay. It, yeah, I, I took the numbers that were mentioned, and uh, it, it's not accounting any excess water that might be there, though. So, uh, what's your estimate on how much water you might have retained? I think about uh, one and a half, two grams. I okay. think that's probably reasonable because it's it's very dry now. Um, and I did actually pour out, um, there was a little slurry at the bottom, a small, small slurry. I did pour that out and also dehydrated that as well. So okay. most of that water should be gone. It should be, it started with five grams. It should be about one or two. Um, okay. okay. And there's a four in total of four gram increase. So I'm assuming about three, two to three grams of calcium carbonate or sorry, okay. CO2. Okay. Let, let's do this. We'll, we'll, we'll chat, uh, Dal, I can hop over, uh, when Matt's, uh, talking okay. to the judging. Uh, if you feel that we have um, with the uh, team Velcro, do you feel like there's a way of deriving a number for that? Uh, yes. Uh, just to clarify, um, that was the one with 20 grams, correct, to begin with? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, yep, I think we can definitely do that. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Um, All done. Also, I'm going to try to remove some more from the units. Uh, I'm going to try to get it. <laughs> okay. Well, what I would say at this stage, because where we are, uh, we want to get into judging uh, and and reveal our winner. Um, one thing I will say, I'll, uh, maybe I'll take a host privilege here, if it, if it will be, if the judges accept, is that I think Team Air Bouncer was able to deliver the most clear measurement of that. Um, we might want to go ahead with an extra point advantage uh, for that team, because there's some uncertainty, I think, around the measurements of the other team. Do do the judges find that fair? Uh, that would ultimately be your call. How does that yeah, sound? That sounds good. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. Why don't we? Uh, if you guys can adjourn as soon as you're done with your judgments uh, on the uh, score, Dal, let me know and ping me, and uh, we'll maybe take, try to take five minutes for that, unless you need more time. Um, but uh, while you guys are doing that, so you guys can go ahead, you, you have the, um, the spreadsheet to enter your scores. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to give people a couple of uh, next steps and let Matt give you a little bit of a preview of some other stuff we're having in uh, open air R&D. Uh, again, we have a whole other team of people for Cyan that are working on a web platform for future competitions. So in the future, it's going to allow people to uh, add um, uh, form teams and it'll give very clear instructions. And if there's particular protocols that they have to follow for the competition that month, they'll all be listed there. And so that's being worked on by an amazing uh, team of people within open air that are located in Pennsylvania, uh, Brooklyn, Dublin, Ireland, and Berlin. And so by next month, hopefully when we, we launch this, uh, it'll be a bit more uh, sophisticated and uh, web-based at that point. So, but Matt, real quick, I was wondering if you could just give us, um, while the judges are, are, are scoring, uh, give us a little preview of the, of the competition that's coming up and if there's anything you want to share about R&D world in general and open air. Yeah, first I want to say, you know, congratulations to all the teams. Uh, I'm really impressed. Uh, I, I, as, as somebody who is uh, a participant, I also want to say that I am uh, uh, really impressed with what the other teams uh, have come up with and uh, I, I think uh, it's anybody's ball game. Um, I do want to quickly show uh, there's a bunch of other R&D work going on at open air. So uh, you've seen a bunch of iterations as part of this competition as part of Cyan. I will mention that Violet is another big research uh, R&D project we have going on. We're working on building uh, custom 
uh, like small DIY open source hardware uh, direct air carbon capture machine uh, called Violet, which would capture uh, CO2 and release it in a gaseous form. So uh, we're looking to uh, use this as something we would pair with uh, greenhouses or urban farms or use as a feeder into something like cyan. Uh, as part of our carbon forming initiative. So uh, we're doing a bunch of different research. A lot of this is due to uh, members who are working in other parts of open air. A lot of this documentation, is, uh, most of this is thanks to uh, Jeff Federson, uh, who's done some really cool work on us. And we've done, you know, we're starting to get into discussing doing algae uh, direct air carbon capture. Uh, we're working on a bunch of testing with different sorbents for um, moisture swing, direct air carbon capture, and doing a lot of testing at home for. So, uh, Cyan is a great project, and but there's other projects that uh, people might be interested in contributing and being a part of uh, here at Open Air. Um, you can see that there's you know a lot of posts here, a lot of work going on uh, in our forums for different uh, projects. Uh, we have uh, one of our most recent things is something we're calling the Mega Sorbent Tester or the MST uh, that we are currently working on documenting and getting up for other people to build their own uh, for testing different moisture swing uh, sorbents. But really what I want to talk to you about is something we're calling the Open Air Carbon Removal Challenge. Uh, this is a really big competition. So we've done a bunch of these competitions where we have had uh, either a weekend or a uh, few months or a month. Uh, this is going to be a much longer term competition, an annual competition we're looking at for students uh, in higher ed settings to build carbon removal uh, devices. Uh, and we're partnering with some really great organizations. We're going to be officially launching it later in the, the fall, later the, uh, this, uh, this month. Um, and we're going to be recruiting teams. We've already recruited a bunch of teams, and we're going to be recruiting more teams from universities that can be grad or undergrad teams to build carbon removal devices, uh, and culminating in the spring with a big uh, showcase of those carbon removal devices uh, at uh, hopefully in person at NYU, uh, COVID and other uh, allowances. Uh, withstanding. So uh, we've been talking to a lot of top people in the fields of open source hardware and uh, carbon removal about what the best strategies are uh, for this challenge. Uh, and we're going to have up to 50 teams uh, we're planning to have in this competition, building carbon removal devices and submitting them to our panel of judges, which are uh, TBD at the moment. We actually have some of them, but we have not populated the, the website for them yet. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions people might have uh, in the chat or R&D while we wait for the judges to come back. Uh, we will be presenting more information more publicly about this uh, carbon removal challenge, but we really hope that this is gonna uh, be a real game changer for us and something that we are going to really push forward uh, into the future uh, and hopefully could have the, the same sort of uh, long-term effect that things like solar car races have had to this point, uh, which have been running since the early 1990s. And I actually recently read that uh, there's a company that's gonna be coming out with a solar car publicly available in the next couple of years, uh, but a lot of EV, uh, technology, uh, the solar car races uh, sort of fed into that as well. So hopefully this could be something that really spurs innovation, really gets new ideas out there into the zeitgeist, really gets a whole new generation of students interested in carbon removal and really acts as a feeder into the carbon removal industry for people who are looking uh, to be a part of that and for companies that are looking for talent coming out of uh, higher ed. Fantastic. And I just really want to salute Matt and my co-founder who really started the R&D world within open air. And if you only knew how hard he's been working, the amount of hilarious measurements he's done in his, his <laughs> Manhattan apartment for sorbent. I can, I can show you. If I stop yeah. sharing, it'll be easier oh. to see. I actually have the, uh, the mega sorbent tester right behind me. Can you see that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So this is a the culmination of now years of work, which is amazing. Uh, about four years we, we ago, we started this idea. And uh, I think it's so important, the, the competition that you're talking about, again, getting more and more students involved in this, picking majors that are related. So it's it's really a big deal. And um, and yeah, Matt mentioned a bunch of other R&D stuff. We have a couple of other cool things that are quasi R&D that are popping up. But the best way to find out about them and to participate uh, is to join Open Air. It's available to anybody. Come into our Discord. Uh, we'll give you a tour and get you plugged in. And Matt, maybe you can, you can toss the uh, join uh, link in there again for those. Maybe. Yeah, let me throw that in there. Oh. I am sweating with anticipation here. Dahl has told me that the judges have come to a um, 
uh, they've, they've selected a winner. Uh, and I think we can announce now. Um, tell me, uh, Dal, how, how's it going? Where, where are we? All right. So uh, it looks like we have, uh, um, if we allocated an extra point to um, to the air uh, team, I think that will actually change which winner we actually have. Uh, so just to let you know that, um, without allocating that extra point, we have a different distribution, but we can probably say it's between air bouncers and team Velcro right now. Uh, Gloria, do you have any uh, comments or suggestions on that? Uh, I, I think since the judges did agree to do a, that points addition, mm -hmm. um, All right. I, I think it's worth including that because there was, yes. it's our uh, it's our first round, but people did meet mm -hmm. requirements out of the gate. And I think there's a really, it's very telling. You can look at how different teams scored in different spaces and see the strengths of different approaches. So right. I think it's worth going into that. Then we have added that extra point, which means that Air Bouncers is first place. Congratulations. Congratulations to Air Bouncers. I know I'm the one who proposed the extra point, but I did think it was fair that it was really good delivery on one of the four measurements. Thank you. Here, so. Indeed. Indeed. Well done, everybody. T-shirts yeah. for Air Bouncers. So you guys can DM me which one you want. Yeah. I might just do T-shirts for everybody. I don't know. I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Edward, Edward oh, there. Really good job. Yeah, Edward yeah. is just... Edward slugging away at this design for a long time and it's so cool i think between the combination of skills that you guys have uh it was neat to see it really come together but i thought it was just great diversity of design approaches incredible creativity i think we just took a quantum leap uh with cyan just with this first preseason. um so doll i don't know i'll give you a moment if you have any final thoughts uh this is your baby uh, you're seeing it take a couple more steps here Yes, I, I, I thought that um, Air Bouncers had a very good uh, approach. Um, basically, you guys have, um, have uh, innovated your way into a new way of, uh, of developing uh, Scion. So just with the bucket, uh, I think that um, you know, that approach, um, if it were, if there were some way to do a transparent bucket and also to uh, make sure that the, uh, the calcium carbonate comes out okay, uh, from that bucket, um, those were probably just my suggestions, but you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. If any other judges have any other any other thoughts before we part, uh, feel free. All right. Great. Well, what we can do as teams, we'll keep talking on the Discord. We're all family there, but I want to say everybody did a phenomenal job. I'm really this way exceeded my expectations. And so uh, those of you who have joined us and the current teams as well, uh, we'll keep you posted on the next version, which will be a bit of a leveling up. It'll be uh, web-based and probably a lot more teams, but incredibly exciting. Thank you, everybody, uh, for joining. And thank you so much to our judges uh, for joining us as well. Hope you had fun. Thank you as great. well. Thank and you. Great job to all the teams. Yeah, these were amazing. I love seeing all of this work. Thank you, guys. Gotta get some, we got to get it in a based competition. Uh, <laughs> you know. And Wes, I would love to see you build one of these babies in your shop. Uh, you know, totally. It would be fun. Great. Yeah, all right. Well, great. I'll leave the Zoom up just for a minute in case there are any links there, but we'll we'll wrap it up. And uh, this is filmed. It will be on our YouTube channel probably in the next 24 hours. So thank you, everybody. Cool. Thank you. Right. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. All right. Thanks.